Right, hello and welcome back to the channel. I just thought I'd have a little uh, show and tell today, really, more than uh, anything else. So I've got a uh, a friend who sends me some radios to be repaired. He sent me some quite interesting stuff lately, a few audio lines and bits and bobs. But this was uh, look at all the controls on that. Now, when when you first look at this, you probably are going to think, "Oh, that's uh, that's probably going to be a sideband radio of some kind." Look at all the switches and the knobs on the front of that thing. Of course, um, that's it, immediately what I thought until I saw the front plate, of course. And it's um, this particular radio is the Moonraker Major. Now, it's not a radio that I've really seen a huge amount of, really. Um, I, I vaguely remember these appearing back in the day. But um, they were quite a fully featured set, really. I mean, they, they had a built-in SWR meter and a, uh, a channel 19 and a channel 9 switch and an off switch which of course just puts it into normal channel mode your 4 watt, your 0 0.4 watt and then your PA switch all on the one switch and a noise blanker and a tone switch and you've also got a delta tune here your SWR calibration dial your mic gain, your RF gain, your squelch and your volume so you don't actually see these uh, turning up that often and uh, this one just really came in for a bit of a tuner, but it had a little bit of uh, a little bit of use. And um, unfortunately, one of the things that this had suffered from, and part of the reason I was going to show you the video, what you can do to replace these, is the is the tabs. Now, what I do to replace these tabs, and if you can get it to focus properly on that, what I do is this: I use a um, some plastic washers. They're cheap, just little plastic washers off of eBay, and. I'll, I'm because I, they're see-through. If you hold the washer over the edge of the of the brake, you can just mark them with a sharpie marker, cut them with a pair of side cutters, and then what I do is I use a bit of super glue just to tack them in place initially, so they they hold them into position, and then just run some epoxy resin down the sides and the back of them there like that. And what it's not folks in here, but what you can do is. Once the epoxy is dried, you can either sand it flat or just, just push it onto the case. And of course, what that does is, is prevents the front of the case obviously coming off. Now you can also, once you've done, once you've, uh, done that, you can color, you can paint these, or I just pen them in with a marker pen. And to be honest, it, it, it's a really good fix. I mean, not, not everybody has got a, a 3D printer. Uh, and I do appreciate that. I know I do a lot of uh, 3D printing on the channel with uh, one thing and another. Now, I'll show you the microphone in a minute, because that's interesting. It's another thing that uh, Steve sent to me. Uh, and one of the things he was missing on this radio was a, um, a channel, uh, not a channel knob, a, a volume control knob. So that was nice. I just literally in five minutes designed an exact uh, copy of the volume control knob and uh, 3D printed one. That isn't even resin printed. So... Um, I mean, I think you'd have to agree that, you know, that is a lot better than having no knob on the radio. And with some of these radios, you know, the knobs can be incredibly hard to get hold of. Uh, but um, resin printed, I don't think you'd know the difference between that and the real knob. It'd be that good. So um, it's a very useful thing to, to have uh, is a 3D printer. And one of the things that Steve sent me, which I found really, really interesting, was this OPEC, I think it's pronounced. I have seen it under a different brand. Power microphone. Now I've given this a really good clean up, but this is certainly uh, quite a vintage item. Um, you'll see that when you actually see the battery pack that was in it. In fact, I think I've got the, the old battery pack on the desk. All right, God knows where that's gone. I'll show you the, the battery I made for this though. The original battery was basically just a collection of coin cells um, heat shrunk together. Now I've made my own here for Steve because um, the, uh, if you wanted to get one of the original batteries, um, it was uh, quite a bit, of a bit of a delivery on it. So I had some old coin cells uh, in the drawer, and I just basically heat shrunk them together and made a little battery to go in there. And I believe uh, it's just, it was a seven volt battery originally, and it was a, a EP175, which is hard, very hard, almost impossible to get hold of now here in the UK. Now this was a, a power mic that was released at the time, and I believe they do make a version of this uh, that's very similar uh, now under a different brand name and uh, it got the uh, the uh, the volume dial on the top there now Steve passes to me with it not working I just wanted just to I thought I would quickly take it apart and just show you what was inside this one and um, 
the, and the reason for it not actually working because this probably would apply to other power mics should you have them a lot of people probably think it's the components inside the microphone or often the lead and stuff but I just wanted to, just to show you something that can very often go in not just this type of power mic but in in all types of power mics and something that um, a way to get out of it a way that doesn't cost anything and is very often available depending on the microphone so let's just take this one apart it's literally just one screw in the back there and then the top of this piece here just hinges up or pushes up off the top of the microphone be a bit bit, bit careful with these if you get one yourself not to damage it there we go and it actually comes apart so the, the top part of it here we've got a fairly sort of a generous um, softened foam piece inside the mesh there for uh, pop noises and here is the microphone now on this one as you can see there we've got an electric microphone suspended on this little plastic platform here now that looks like something you could definitely 3d print fairly easily if you were if you needed a replacement so if you had a microphone or a power mic something like this of a similar vintage the first thing that you would check is continuity using the continuity tester on your meter on each of the pins and to the to the board here because that is obviously one of the first places for these leads to break down and go either in the plug or in the lead now more often than not you'll find that sometimes that is the actual problem with the microphone um, however on this one um, the problem with that wasn't the case it was uh, something else we weren't getting as uh, as with all power mics when you key up um, that energizes the circuit within the microphone okay so when you key up then it powers up and you de-key and then it stops powering the circuit uh, it might not be evident to some people but that i just thought i'd mention that because on most of them that's how they work now on this one we weren't getting any transmit at all even though we got all of these connections made so some people might, might think at first ah well it's got to be one of the components inside um, but really when you see what's in this you'll realize that most of these components are definitely not going to go with the exception of the capacitor so we'll just take these two screws out and i'll flip the board over and show you what i mean now there are a few things that can go with the power mic um, the potentiometer knob anywhere where you've got user input is normally a place where you're going to have problems but i've known i've seen a lot of people on forums uh, on repair stuff is that they'll start looking at transistors and resistors and you know capacitors unless these items on here look physically damaged they're very unlikely to go the least likely uh, component to fail is those ceramic capacitors any of these small capacitors the next on the list is the resistors highly unlikely for them to go um, the transistors again very unlikely for those to ever go um, the most likely obviously culprits being the capacitors but even them they can be really badly degraded on power mics um, so unless you've got like a, a bad connection um, as you can see I, I, in disassembling this the microphone lead has popped off the microphone I'll pop that back on in a minute but what the problem with this one was and you'll find this on a lot of um, microphones not just power mics but other microphones is again it's user input now over the years where this has been used the switch contacts inside had gone now when you see uh, a switch on on a microphone or uh, a power mic like this where you have these pairs of contacts you've got basically a changeover set of contacts on each side here so these first three here these two first two are normally closed and that with the cent that being the center pin there and the second and the second contact the third contact in is your is your normally open contact so as you push that these pair open these pair close same with these ones these pair open these pair closed these pair open these pair closed and these pair open and these pair closed when you push the ptt in. now you'll notice on this one there's two links now i've added those links in because the reason this wasn't working you see here these two lines here this is the power this this is basically switches the negative volt line from the battery okay from from the battery to the circuit and it was these two contacts when i tested with the meter that weren't making but the nice thing is you've got with this switch if you'll notice here that you've got a spare not only a set of contacts in the normally closed position here you've also got them in the normally open position here so if you ever do see this on a microphone 
and, you, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to, have to take the switch apart and do things. You don't. You can simply just link these two because these aren't being used. Now, I thought I'd point this out because it might not be immediately obvious to some people that they can do that. And um, it's useful because you don't even have to take the switch out. So simply bridging those two contacts for the spare contacts has now enabled this microphone to work. And it's always prudent when you do this to get a can of that spray um, compressed air and spray in the switch there a little bit and a little bit of switch cleaner if it's needed. Uh, not too much because you can dry the switch out. And you can bring these things back to life. Now, the reason that I persevered with this um, microphone for Steve was just because of how strange it's looked. I've, I've, it's kind of a unique, odd looking microphone. I've not seen one quite like this before. And I thought this was definitely worth um, the sort of half an hour to an hour as uh, work to actually bring this this one back so i thought some of you might find that useful that little tip or those two tips uh, that i use for doing repairs on the cb radios here and um you know power mics i know some people love them some people hate them but i think they uh you know they definitely got a place although i will say that microphone repairs in general can take you quite a while particularly when you've got to clean them take them apart uh, if, if you have to change the lead or the plugs. So do bear that in mind if you're doing um, repairs for other people and you're charging for your, for your time, that in terms of time, uh, repairing microphones isn't very cost effective. But if you're, if like me, you do, do this mainly for the love of uh, bringing this old gear back to life, then uh, I think that's a worthy cause. And there's a repair done on the front cover literally from having just the one screw holding this on that was the only screw that was holding the front plate on to now having all four screws and you can see the epoxy there which I just literally used a sharpie just to paint it in black so it um, kind of matches the rest of it but the main thing is it's super strong and super secure that isn't going to come off and um, like I say, if you do put a bit too much epoxy on, you can simply just file it flat so it fits. So it fits. So if it's because uh, these are quite a snug fit. So if it does pop up a little bit, don't worry too much when you're putting it on. Just file it down and then paint it black. Right, that's all our knobs on. Here comes our fake knob. Can you tell? There you go. So yeah, this is uh, this is cleaned up rather nicely. It's um, it's really good to see one of these. Uh, clean up and uh, yeah I'm happy with that and we'll leave that on the SWR calibration knob because it's one that's less likely to get twizzled. So what I think we'll do is um, we'll connect this up, we'll plug in the power mic and we'll just do a quick test to the President Randy in the other room and, uh, and see what it sounds like. There's always something you forget. <laughs> Spinning the, uh, the case over in my excitement I see there's a missing bracket here. So cosmetically, apart from it looking not great with the screw missing, we need to sort that. Right, I've just run the tap through these uh, little plates so we can fit some nice brand new uh, M3 black case screws in there because uh, the old screws were these self-tapping type and um, they're getting pretty hard to find now in, in black. Uh, I've got some uh, silvery ones but they're a bit too long and uh, they're not really, not really the right colour. So. I'll tap those, I'll take normal M3 screws. The little plate uh, isn't going to work, I don't think. So to the 3D printer. You're really left with no other option if you've got a missing clip like this to make them yourself, either out of some sheet metal of some kind or uh, as I normally do with the 3D printer. In the time it took me to put the, four, the three screws back in there and line that up and solder the tabs that I'd printed off. So um, it's a pretty quick option. So if you haven't got yourself a 3D printer, why not? <laughs> Go get one, they're superb. Right, I'll just pop a little, uh, a little heated stud into that so we can screw something. Uh, you can screw into the plastic, but it works better if you use these. Okay, so seems to be one of my popular sizes. Let's get some more of these on order. We'll just heat the soldering iron up and pop that in there and then we can screw straight into that. This bit so satisfying. There we go. There we go. And that's a bit neater looking now. We got rid of those horrible, rusty old screws. So, let's get it soldered up. 
and switched on. Right, we're back in business. There we go, the speakers all working hunky dory. Now the uh, this has got a nice feature, an SWR meter built in. I'm going to show you this one because uh, the only other video I could see, the st the, these switches were a bit stiff. I have actually freed them up, believe it or not. You switch it to the cow position there and then you key the microphone. You adjust the calibration knob till it's on the cow marker there, okay? And then you press on, you go back to your SWR and that will show you your relative SWR. So that antenna's not bad, not too bad. It's not brilliant, it's not too bad. Right now, the other features on the Moonraker, we've got a, the, the 4 watt point four and the PA switch and the noise blanker. It doesn't really seem to do a great deal. Uh, it, it does appear to work, but only marginal. We've got the tone switch, high and low, and then we've got the RF gain and the mic gain, which you will know. Now, the Delta Tune, someone, <laughs> the only video I could find on this, someone wasn't sure what that means. What the Delta Tune is, all the Delta Tune will do is tune the radio in to frequencies that are slightly off. Now, that is quite useful, particularly if you're, um, if you're chatting with fellas with older radios that have drifted off frequency a little bit. They tend to drift down frequency as they get older if they're not uh, serviced. So the Delta Tune feature is quite nice because it will actually tune you, uh, tune the signals into the radio better, but it will also offset your transmit frequency as well. On this radio it does. So um, just bear that in mind. But it's a, a useful feature and um, that might just on a, on a sort of uh, a very uh, patchy QSO, that might be the difference between it working and not working. So um, that is a really lovely feature and it's not one that you see really unless you go uh, to the multi-mode sideband radios such as these two boys sat just there. And these have got naughty switches on them as well over here you see. So uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do a video on those two bad boys one of these days. But um, yes, yeah, so that's uh, that's a quick run through of the moon record. I thought I'd do that because the only video really that was on it um, as such, apart from Richard's amazing videos, of course, um, was the guy didn't really know what the thing did. <laughs> it's not very good. So anyway, um, the OPEC microphone, look at that. And um, what should we set it on? Should we put it on? Let's whack it all the way up to 10. I should have made it go up to 11, shouldn't I? Alright, we've got the uh, mic gain at about 75%. I found this to be about the sweet spot. It was uh, a bit over the top there. And we've got the, the power mic set on set in four. So it's quite a powerful power mic as they go. If I um, if you go any higher than that, it's a bit too, it distorts. So um, you've got to be a bit careful. So anyway, we'll, we'll chat to Mick. Hi there, Mick. Um, I've got the Moonraker. I wonder what, uh, what it sounds like. I'm back on the power mic now. I wonder if uh, you could just let us know what you think, Rog. Ah, uh, Roger, just put a bit of uh, light onto the radio there. Probably a bit too much. Um, yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, yeah, so it's it's a bit quiet with the standard mic on it, isn't it? So um, we can't go adjusting the uh, adjusting the set internally to suit the power mic. So I'll just have to let the customer know that it's set in number four, uh, and then about three quarters on the mic gain, Roger. Okay, super job. Well, we'll leave it at that. Brilliant. Right, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I'll try and bring at least one of these videos a week to you. These seem to be fairly popular, the repair videos. I've also got a few radios lined up from suppliers as well to do some tests on. So me and Mick will get out there and have a little play as the weather improves. We seem to be coming out of winter rapidly now. And if you've got a CB radio or a ham radio that you had in the past and you'd like me to feature, just drop me a line or leave me a comment in the comments section below and I may well have it. I've got over 60 radios here and I haven't shown you half of them. So uh, if you do have a, a CB that you'd like to see featured on the channel, please let us know. And if you've got a CB that you need 
need fixing as well also drop us a line right we'll catch you on the next one take care and thanks for watching using the opec power mic the opec power mic on setting number 10 with the moonraker major transmitting on four watts one two three four five five four three two one this is the opec power mic on level four on level four with the moonraker major testing one two three four five five four three two one the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog.